the quick vote question of the week. The options were the Christian and demons, the lying spirit in 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 21 to 23, and Christianity and denominations. Well, all of this you can also participate in on the, on the blog and express your thoughts. There are many others expressing their thoughts on several of these things, and I really uh, appreciate that. So make sure you get involved on the blog as well. But the one I'm going to deal with now is the one you chose for us to talk about. And that is men and long hair. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 4 to verse 14, it talks about a man dishonoring his head by covering it when praying. And that a man brings shame unto himself by wearing long hair. Does this mean it is wrong for a man to have long hair? What is the significance of this portion of the Bible? So we go straight to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I want to read from verse 1 so that you can be in good perspective with this and I might even take you to the previous chapter a little later all right says be followers of me even as I also am of Christ now I praise you brethren that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of God, judging yourselves, is it comely that a man pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. All right. Question. Does this mean it is wrong for men to have long hair? What is the significance of this portion of the Bible? How long is long? How long is long hair? I'm not sure that the Bible, in any place in the Bible or in, or in, the, uh, in Bible history, there was a, a definite length that was given for a man's hair to grow after which it becomes long. Now we have to understand here what the teaching is about by being in the context, understanding the context of the presentation. And so I'm going to take you into the previous chapter so you know where Paul was coming from in this teaching here. And so you can understand the instructions. So this is chapter 11. And so we'll move backwards here into chapter 10 and uh, pick a comfortable place because a long chapter dealt with so many different things. And so I would go straight to um, uh, verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. You see, in that chapter 10, he addressed several issues in the house of God and uh, he also talked about the environment others among whom they lived and the things that happened between them and others and so he got here over in the in the 31st verse and says whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of God give none offense verse 32 give none offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. 
Look at that again. He says, don't offend anyone. Don't offend the Jews. Don't offend the Gentiles. And don't offend the church of God. What's he dealing with here? He's talking about our way of life. The things we do, he says, should be to the glory of God. And we should not become an offense to those around us. Whether the Jew, the Gentile, or to the church of God for that matter. Look at that. Verse 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Now remember, the Bible was not written in chapters and verses. And so, we might as well read from here all the way into chapter 11. Because that's the way it was written. It wasn't written in chapters and verses. Chapters and verses were given for easy reference. So, the way Paul wrote it would go from verse 33, chapter 10, into verse 1, chapter 11. As a continuous um, uh, passage of his letter. So, we read again from verse 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. He says, hey, I don't be an offense to the Jews or to the Gentiles or to the church of God. Even as I please all men around me, I please everybody. And I, 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 I don't want to do it for my own profit. I do it for the profit of others. For their salvation. Because I want them to be saved. Then he goes on to say. So copy my example. That's the beginning of verse 11. Copy my example. As I also. I am following Christ. Then he says in verse 2. Now I praise you brethren. That you remember me in all things. And keep the ordinances. As I deliver them to you. Then he brought up a new thought. In verse 3. But I would have you know. So it's still in the context. Of dealing with our environment. We're dealing with those around us. And so he comes up with this customary thing about men covering their head or not covering their head and women covering their head or not covering their head. And in that society, they cover their head. And so he, he compared it to natural situations. He's trying to say, look, this custom is all right. There's nothing wrong with it. He says, judge yourself. I mean, is this wrong? He says, Men have short hair. Women have long hair. Because the, the long hair was given to them for a covering. So if in the society we find that this group covers or the other group doesn't cover. He says, hey, I want you to follow what's available there not to be an offense. Now look at this. Because when they went into the churches, the Gentiles were there. The Jews were there. They also came to the churches. For the Jews... The women veiled their hair as a submission, a sign of submission to their husbands. They covered their hair. It was a sign of uh, humility. That's what it was. And then the Gentiles also did the same thing. They covered their hair. And those who were caught in prostitution were shaved as a, a sign of disgrace. And then those women who were, who were halots went around without covering their hair. So it was a sign that either a woman had been caught in halotry or was a halot. If she was caught, she was shaved. If she was out patronizing uh, uh, those who were coming for her, she left her head as a sign. That she wasn't under any man. And so Paul said. If you're not going to cover. Then also be shaved. Because it's the same thing. If you are ashamed. To be shaved. Then why don't you get covered? See. So. And then. He, so he, he was dealing here. With a customary thing. And, and this is very important. This is very important. Because of what we're going to see a little later. So he was dealing here with a customary thing. And then he related it to natural circumstances. And said, hey, is it alright for a man to pray with his head covered? Because, see, uh, he's the image of God. Let's go there. He says here in, uh, from verse 7, For man indeed 
ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. And then he, he says in verse 13, Judging yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you? So, he's here looking at uh, a customary thing that was not offensive to Christianity and that had something to do with uh, natural teaching. And he says, this is okay. And I want you to act this way. See, remember something. The priests, the priests of the Old Testament covered their hair. They covered their head. In their full regalia, the high priest had his head covered. Did God not hear his prayer? So this is not a suggestion at all by the Apostle Paul that men should be uncovered because the priest was a man. And God gave the instructions. And Paul is looking at natural circumstances. And so we have to understand that he wasn't giving a, a law to the church. Incidentally, um, because, of this, because of this parochial uh, view by many, even some of the translations of the Bible are misleading in this regard. Now I'm going to show you something um, in a few verses down here. So, it doesn't mean that a man must not have long hair. But we already understand that naturally when a man has very long hair, it, it, it does get the attention of those around us. You know, it, it's, just, it's much like smoking, for example. Well, the Bible doesn't say anything about smoking. And if you were smoking around certain Christians, they're going to be surprised. And, hey, man, why? Because they think it's a dirty habit. They think something's wrong with it. You know? There are many things like that um, that the Bible doesn't say anything about. But naturally, around us, and people will raise an eyebrow. Okay? They'll raise an eyebrow because of what you're doing. Not because that thing is wrong necessarily in the sight of God. But around you, they will be judged wrong. And that's what the Bible teaches us. How to behave in the presence of others. And that's actually the summation of Paul's talk here. Now let me show you something. Uh, you go down to... I'm, I'm going to read from verse 14 um, to the end of that particular discussion, which is 16. Doth not even nature itself, 14, doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering? So you see, her hair is given her for a covering. If her hair is given her for a covering, why must she need a veil? So these are um, expressions of symbolisms. Okay, notice something. Verse 16. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now that's the scripture that many have wrongly translated and held to these things, that we must have uh, the women cover their hair and the men not cover their hair. And they forget that this is not exactly what the, the scripture is presenting at all because the priests covered their hair and they were, they were the ones to lead the prayers. To God and God heard them. You see, now it says, But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now, some have said that this scripture means that we have no other custom except this custom of hair covering. That's not what Paul was saying. What he's saying here is very simple. He says, If any man seem to be contentious, if you want to become argumentative, actually, he says, If a man seem to be fond of argument. That's the expression of the word that was translated contentious. The Greek word means to be fond of argument, to be argumentative as a way of life, as an attitude to life. That's what he's saying. Now, he says, we have no such custom. Now, when he says we have no such custom, he's not referring to the custom of covering hair. He means we have no such in fact, the, the, the Greek is sonethia. It means attitude. It means a way of doing things. It means we have no such way of this argumentative behavior. It says, if you, if you want to be argumentative about, uh, argumentative about these things, 
we, we don't have that kind of lifestyle. We're not going to be arguing with you. We're not going to join issues with you. That's exactly what he's saying. We will not join issues with you. If, if any man is going to be contentious about this, we're not going to join issues with you. If you're fond of arguments, you love arguments because of these things that I've said. He says, hey, we don't have that attitude and the churches of God don't have that attitude. So we are not going to argue with you. So he wasn't referring to the custom of covering hair or not covering hair. So don't make an issue out of it. Don't make an issue out of it. There's no definite length of hair that makes a man's hair long or that makes a, a, a man's hair short. And um, it's important that we do not become offensive to our society in the way, in the structure of our society. That's the teaching that he was giving us. So long as those things that are demanded of us or desired of us are not offensive to God, 